Sure. Uh, we, we, we came in, we're just going to start by advising you, giving you the Miranda rights, right. and then uh, um, you have the right to remain silent. You understand that? Yes. Okay. Anything you said can will be used against you in the court of law. You understand that? Yes. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you're being questioned. You understand that? Yes. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before and during the question if you wish. You understand that? Yes. You can decide any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. You understand that? Yes. Okay. Um, I have these rights in mind. You want to talk to us today? Yeah. Okay. We uh, we just wanted to get that out of the way. The Rich is on his way over. Okay. Um, this is the email that Rich sent over yesterday. So he is on his way. Anything you want to go long way? We shouldn't be. No, but we can't talk to you. No, I'm fine. Candy bar or nothing? Are you done with the newspaper already? Did you, what did you do? Swear off those candy bars? Yeah, it's in the fridge. I don't know if it's. I'm going to eat it. Don't worry. Anyhow, we'll be back out over here when Rich gets here, all right? I won't go anywhere. All right. Off my <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing today, Joe? All right. Hey, just before we start, I know these guys reviewed your rights earlier. Yes. Okay. Um, and then uh, you were just meeting uh, privately with Rich Kerner, your uh, attorney. Yes. And uh, Rich just came out and indicated that um, uh, you did not want him to be present today. Correct. Okay. 
So again, I want to make sure we go and have those ground rules. Rich told me that you indicated that you did not want in person today. Um, so we will um, take you at your word on that. And if at any time you would like us to call uh, Rich back or any other attorney in the, the standby council, uh, please let us know, okay? All right. Um, we're, we're only going to be talking about things unrelated to the Samantha Coney case today. And, and understood, yes. Um, and uh, obviously, um, without your attorney present in the Coney case, we won't be able to talk about anything related to that case. And if, if you start to talk about it, you know, we're going to have to stop. All uh, right. Are you okay? Yes. All right. Um, that's been sitting in the, in the refrigerator for the... Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, the, here's, the, here's the thing. The FBI's been cleaning up the refrigerator. It'll <laughs> keep for 100 years or something. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Um, so talking about other crimes, um, uh, you know, we, we wanted to kind of pick up where we left off on some things, uh, give you any information that uh, you might be thinking about over the last few weeks right. um, related to that. And uh, I think we had some updates on the New York search mm -hmm. and things like that. So uh, why, don't, why don't we start there? Okay, and I, and also the, the live feed, I wanted yeah. to jump into that because I know um, we came over on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, we had it set up, we had a couple guys up in Tupper Lake. Um, oh. <laughs> To, to go over the bank, <laughs> to go over the bankrupt, yeah, bit of that a drive. That was a great drive. Where they were at. Um, yeah, in all fairness, I never set up a specific day, but it actually would have worked because my attorney didn't show up till that afternoon. Yeah. All right, well, it didn't work that day, um, yeah, but we uh, so. we had hoped to have it set up today since we when we thought you were was going to work for today, but Albany had some other stuff come up. But I have to say, it was pretty cool. We tested it and the way that, just so you have an idea of what it looks like and what to expect, because mm -hmm. we'll try to set something up for next week. Um, but we did two laptops. One of them was uh, a, essentially like a tracker, so you had an over an overhead GPS okay. Google map kind of view. Right. And then the other one was the live feed actually from the camera. And then the plan, we had speaker phones, so then you can say, you know, go right here, go left here. And our plan was just to use, because Tupper Lake's a little more remote than doing it in a city, we wanted to we used to have a like, we just talk about the bank record because that was... Make sure we had cell reception or wherever the and how they get the signal. Because depending on where, they, where they're at, they have to use, sometimes they'll use satellite, sometimes they'll look and they use different types of things in order to bring them. Wow. Yeah. It's kind of I'm assuming some of these places we're going to go are going to be cell phone only. So. <laughs> finally living up to people's expectations. Right? Well, all those CSI shows. <laughs> they still can't usually get the things solved in 20 minutes. Yeah, right? really? It's an hour show, but I'm picturing the Google Earth car when you drive yeah. around. <laughs> right. Yeah, I guess you get one of those. <laughs> so we like to still do that. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, I don't have a day yet. I don't know a specific day. There's snow area. Um. Probably. There wasn't, if there, there wasn't much. I mean, it wasn't something. But typically, the morning works for you, right? Because that's what the four-hour time. Typically, we can, we can get that. Yeah. There's kind of want to don't want to drive three hours again. Maybe we could just do it in Albany here. <laughs> but we thought the memory lane trip to uh, Tupper Lake would be more interesting. Maybe for yeah. both of us. Yeah. Well, I spent a lot of time in Tupper Lake. I'm sure we can find our way over. Right. <laughs> so you're thinking next week? Yeah, I, I don't have a specific date yet. We'll work on setting up a date next week. And we'll do it um, like we did this time early enough that if you've got other stuff, um, right. try not to yeah. make a conflict with that so that we can get you back there by mid morning. Either. Right. Um, yeah, I didn't realize you had to. all, I don't know. <laughs> You didn't mix that when you came uh, in. Yeah, you I didn't mention that. You didn't. You weren't in a. You weren't receptive. Well, look, that's all right. It's your it's your decision. But we just want to let you know they're going to set it up next week, and it'll be your choice whether to come over or not. But they're probably not going to set. You know, they're only able to do this. Well, we'll do it again. Yeah. Gas is expensive. Keep it within the budget. So. Tupper Lake is probably good. Still a good location now. Yeah. Uh, the new thing is New York stuff. 
So you what they took from the property in New York? All right. Yeah. This was the this is the list. And some of it's pretty, you know, kind of generic in terms of the description of what these were, but actually the property. Wow. I didn't way back then. <laughs> What's that? Um, all the stuff. Anything from New York, you're going way back. When's the last time you were there? Oh, I was there just a year or so ago, but living there, I haven't been there. You, you went, like, stayed there in a... You went by there since yeah, 2011, though. I mean, if you could like, your time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Every time I'm back yeah. there, I go by, but I... I mean, all the stuff that's there is... It's like childhood memories. <laughs> Did you live there for a period of time? Yeah. How long? A little less than a year. Yeah, seven, eight months. In 97, I think, right? Yeah. 97. Does it look the same? I'm surprised the rope is still there. There's a lot of, uh, on one side, it's missing a lot of shingles. I mean, you know, which of these pictures are showing? Yeah, I thought last time I was there, I thought the roof was falling in one spot. But there's some other pictures, and apparently the basement. Well, I got some pictures. The basement's got quite a bit of water in it. Oh, here you can see it better. The That's the indoor swimming pool. Uh, yeah, you can see it. The high water. ground water. Yeah. So this is the main. This is the main house, because there's a bunch of buildings. There's like an, an old garage and an old shed, yeah. Okay. And then here's the indoor swimming pool. And in one of these pictures, you can see it's this one right here, just the angle. One of the support beams oh, yeah. is coming down, and so it's not super stable. How did they able to get down? That's through the window. Oh. Came down, put a ladder down through the window. Okay. Went down that way. Yeah, those stairs down. Is that the kitchen of the main house? Yeah. I don't know the staying there that you know? Was that what all this stuff is from? Is it like close up of that? Or was that how it was when you were there? Last time I was there, it looked like there had been hunters or campers hanging out in there. I just spent some time there. Yeah. Because there was... There was a mattress on one of these floors, too. It's not in these pictures. It might be just off the side here. There's a mattress in the kitchen area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, what building is that? That's the garage. There was no running water. There was, yeah. There was an indoor bathroom. Yeah. Oh, there was? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you got a third building. Mm -hmm. Did you guys have animals there at one point? Not like dogs and cats, yeah. but like animals in one of these. There were cows there, yeah. yeah. That's what they said it looked like it because there's some hay or straw and stuff still. Mm -hmm. Still around. Mm -hmm. This was a box. Yeah, that first sheet. There's a receipt on there. You can't really see it in the uh, picture. There was an invoice for some, gu for some guns and ammo back in 1994. Mm -hmm. 
I don't remember what that was for. I recognize some of the books vaguely, but it's been a while since I've been to any of that stuff. Did you have a place up there that you could buy guns? No, not in New York. I never bought guns officially. I was always under the table. Okay. We'll get the invoice, because they said the invoice was in your name in March of 1994. Mm -hmm. I had a gun on it? That's what I thought. I, I thought it had a gun on it. That was my interpretation, but I'll I'll have them send up the image so you can look at it. Yeah. Bunch of maps. Yours? Yeah. Anything we should be looking for? Computers. Any X's on them anywhere? Anything? No. Should be looking for X's on my map. <laughs> <laughs> highlight. <laughs> highlight. Oh, highlight that. Yeah. Okay. Well, the only map you found that had highlighting on, I didn't do highlighting. Who did the highlighting on that one? I don't know. I don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what about the, the map that one you wanted? I think there was one in the car that was highlighted. highlighted. When I was arrested, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I didn't do the highlighting. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's what they were thinking. Well, it was the interstate that was highlighted, and right. you don't seem to really be an interstate kind of person. No, that's just one of the things. A couple other things. There's a mattress out in the woods. Mm -hmm. You know what that is, though? No. There were some clothes under it. There were some women's clothes under it. Oh, I mean, you're not going to find anything relevant. There were uh, there were underneath it. Mm -hmm. And then this is a photo from the fire pit area behind the house. Um, oh, yeah. It's a ring. It's like a men's ring. And those are some like, beads from a necklace. Huh. Yeah, I, I haven't burned anything in that pit for a long time, so... Any, anything that you found in there is probably from hunters or somebody who's camped in there. So, I mean, there hasn't been any. I put a gate across the road. Uh, as soon as my folks moved out of that place, but it only stayed up for a year or two, and then hunters cut it down. What are they hunting with what's there? Uh, white tail. Was there ever a time that you burned anything of significance in that fire pit? No, not a great Anything related to crimes? Possibly, but nothing. Uh, this is all Nothing ancient. like this? Yeah, no, that, this is all ancient. Before I, I mean, I haven't really spent much time here ever since I was in the Army. Okay. So this, this isn't going to be a ring to somebody that we need to be worried about? No. Okay. Do you have any questions about this stuff? We're going to get all of this up here, and so once we get it up here, we can pull it out. Like I, I we'll grab this stuff to see what that is. What the invoice is. Okay. Some of this other stuff. <laughs> you know who's that for? Oh, we have a huge, yeah. We'll bring it in when we get it. Sure. Um, so I think that. Anything you said trip down memory lane. Yeah, there it was. You know. okay. I didn't even realize I still had anything in that. I, yeah, I'm guessing all that stuff was in the garage or something. Or? Um, it was it was spread out. I think the box was in the garage. 
I don't remember where some of the other, like the road, you know, some of the other specific stuff. But I know the box. Pretty sure the box was in the garage. Huh. Okay. And then I, I think we uh, jump into this, but just I have this stuff laid out to show you. Um, is it there? Yeah. <laughs> I think we, we maybe even showed you these before. I don't no, know if we I saw the ones that were down there. Okay, yeah. These was that as they found it? Yeah. They might have pulled something away. Just so you could see where, okay. about where it was. Yeah. I was going to yeah. say I thought I kind of came before you. Yeah, that was to sort of like walking up on it. You can okay. see it. Um, we got a report. We got all the stuff sent it into the lab. So we do everything that we get. And uh, um, the tray that holds the ammo in there has a perfect right Thumbprint. Yeah, right. No, there is. <laughs> I don't have the lab report. <laughs> wow. Uh oh. So, more CSI stuff. Yeah, I'm impressed. Well, I'm disappointed in myself mostly, but I'm. <laughs> <laughs> the lab examiner called me. I don't have the report. When I get the report, I'll show you the report. But I'm not being seen. It was on one of these two on the plastic tray inside. Huh. Like this piece must be the plastic, like the bottom view of yeah. the top view of it. Okay. Slides into that cardboard sleeve. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's kind of a hurry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So too lazy to even dig a hole for that one. Mm -hmm. Just piled rocks on top of it. Are you planning on going back for that? Yeah, this summer. <laughs> that would have been a good trip. <laughs> I, I still can't get over the whole the disappeared house in Vermont thing. <laughs> you have big plans for this summer? Back there? Well, I, you know, I was going to go back there. I just I mean, pictured driving up, looking everywhere for that farmhouse and not being able to find it. <laughs> to burn it down? Yeah, that would have been funny. But whatever, uh, you guys did that for me. Speaking of Vermont. Yeah, speaking of Vermont, <laughs> we were talking to uh, Vermont on Monday. And they want to know what's going on. And they are interested in filing charges as they have been all along. What, so federal? Well, you know, you don't know. They no, no. I mean, I, we talked to both the state and federal prosecutors on Monday, and we want to know what we should tell them from your perspective. Well, it's a little hard to talk about the general over my general overall perspective right now for obvious reasons. So. Well, just tell us your perspective. I understand that, and we're not going to do that, but we're going to, we are interested in your perspective on the courier murders, because that's what they're interested in. Right? And they're, yeah, they're also interested in, you know, your cooperation on other crimes and where that stands and whether you intend to follow through on some of that. And so that's the kind of thing, you know, they're looking for from us. Well, like I've said all along, my cooperation on other crimes is dependent on what's going on with the uh, crimes that I'm already charged with. So. And I've said that all along. As far as uh, Well, you've known, and we've been, you know, we've, we've talked about this quite a bit, that Vermont is willing to be patient if they think that there's forward momentum on solving other crimes, you know. And I know that you don't care about that from the perspective of the family of other victims, but Vermont does. And so there's a way to meet in the middle by giving something that they can then 
have. No, they don't need to know the details of it, but they need to know who's got some details so that they can continue to hold on. I just don't understand why, um, even from a legal perspective, I don't understand what the hurry is or what their issue is as to why they want to file charges, additional charges, when I'm clearly already charged with substantial ones. Well, in, in Vermont, you've got state prosecutors who right now have an unsolved, yeah, according to the public, unsolved murder of the, the courier. Right? So the law enforcement is under a lot of pressure. We get calls from the press that they're telling us every week you know, through different state prosecutors are elected, so I think they probably feel more of an obligation to you know, inform the, the public than you know, people who are appointed or lifetime prosecutors. Right. But uh, since they called off the search for the bodies, as far as the public knows, they can't even definitively say that it was a homicide. I know they already told everybody it was. But they know that. Vermont knows that. They know, right. They know. So Vermont, as you guys, let's just be a really realistic approach to it. If you're a state prosecutor in Vermont, you know, you want to come out and say, Hey, here are the charges we've got. We've got the guy. He's solved. That's what you want to do. Right. So, you need to give them a reason to say, don't do that. If you don't want her to do that. I mean, that's the... Well, like I say, my perspective at this point is... They're asking for a reason, for me to give them a reason not to do that, and I have no reason to suspect that at this point that any information, any further information I give is going to be used or portrayed to the media in a way that I'm told it will be, or won't be, just because that's the way it's played out so far. So. If they're saying I, I guess what I'm saying is that from my perspective at this point it's a one-way street and initially I thought there were ways that I could manipulate this situation in this case all the related cases um, to my benefit and on my timeline by withholding information and giving information out, and you know, obviously, over the last few months, I uh, came to the realization that I can't do that, not realistically. So, uh, is, that, is that your real reasoning? Yeah. I think we've talked about for a while, you know, an idea of this whole resolution on the courier case, being able to kind of structure that disposition around some of your demands. And, you know, we touched upon that, and I know that you know, we can't talk about the other case, but, right. you know, it seems to me that, you know, if you give us a list of demands in connection with a uh, federal case on the couriers, that we can try to at least start meeting those demands. And at least say, you know, the Vermont state that there's an, an expression of an intent to continue cooperation in exchange for these types of things. I, I do. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. The problem is I don't have any typical demands, or there's not anything you can offer me at this point. And I realize that now. I realize that there's more to these cases than the people who sit in this room, and we're not the ones who pull all the strings on this. I'm realistic about that now. So. And um, because of things that have happened over the last couple months, I just feel like there's a lot of information that I've given out to date that 2020 hindsight I wouldn't have given out because I feel like now 
no matter what I do, it's going to become public anyway. Whereas if I hadn't given it out, you know, it wouldn't have because you wouldn't have it. The information to give out in the first place. Well, I mean, from from our perspective, um, we've done a lot to to respect your wishes about keeping the publicity low on this case. And, and, and I think, if you recall, you do told us that that yeah, you understand that we've done that. Now, over time, um, as things have slowed down and we haven't learned about the crime, then the FBI and the you know, authority around the country have to take certain steps. Right? I think the search warrant is an example that you know they said, "Hey, look, you know, give us a reason to tell our to tell their bosses why they didn't need to do search warrant that's been released house. Why they didn't need to move forward, but they didn't have any reason." You know? So. I think you can see that we can have a lot of control when we have some information from you and cooperation from you. If we don't, then we all lose control. And even Vermont's letter that I recall, like, you know, they had this letter about I can provide this, and we just kind of sit back and we don't get involved. And that was the thrust of that letter. And I think what happened in Vermont after that was sort of a function of handling us, sort of not going along with those, with that deal. And so I think that, that's what ended up happening there. Yeah, you know, I understand your perspective, but at the same time, you know, I think there is a way to structure a deal around the courier that's going to satisfy some of your goals. You know, maybe not every one of them. But, you know, we can't do that unless, you know, we sort of have a, an exchange for future cooperation. Here's what I want to happen on the courier uh, case. We have that, I think that's a little bit more concrete to that. Well, the only reason the courier case has even become an issue is because of me wanting to keep control of that situation before it became a situation. That's why we talked about it in the first place. Mm -hmm. The loose ends, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. That was my concern. As far as long term, clearly this is the whole situation is turning going to turn into longer term than I anticipated, even from my perspective. And so my position on it at this point is you're asking for more information and I am still waiting to see what happens with the information I've already given. Um, so essentially, what can happen is, it, you know, this is, it becomes a one-way street until I see what comes out the other end on some of these other issues. Well, we're, we're also looking at it from your from what you expressed earlier, the, the time frame. You all said, are we going to be sitting here a year from now? And this was going back four months or five yeah. months. So we're getting a lot closer, I think, <laughs> to the year from now. Because yeah. Of, so, yeah. You know, and, you know, we've also talked about the way that Vermont initially came out. You know, we were all kind of um, hadn't fully prepared for what could happen in Vermont, right? You've said it, we've said it. And we've learned things from how we dealt with Vermont that would not need to be repeated in other jurisdictions. So, you know, we have um, information about in many other jurisdictions. We can approach them without even giving them any details. I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, I feel like there's been several, I don't want to say breach of trust, because I know we don't trust each other, but based on initial things that were said verbally, nothing in writing, I know we didn't have agreements hard and fast. I just feel like, you know, especially with the last search warrants that were executed, it was done in a way that was clearly contrary to what my initial intentions were for the way this whole thing would play out. And uh, you know, I hear what you're saying as far as it has to be done, but 
I what I'm doubtful about is the motivation for doing it. Your motivation or the FBI, whoever's whoever sanctioned that, their motivation for doing it in the way that they did it. Well, hey, like you said, you know, you're gonna be suspicious of us, we're gonna be suspicious of you. But frankly, when we've sat down in this room, everyone here has tried to play straight with you. And I think if you look if you understand the reality of the situation, and you're a pretty reality-based guy, I mean, you understand how the world works, is you know, once you stop telling us significant information about other crimes, then the, these guys couldn't control what the rest of the FBI is going to do. And the playbook says, you know, if you've got a serial killer, you're going to have to go through that house, right, with a fine-tooth comb, even though they can say, hey, Israel's told us there's nothing there. Well, you know, they're going to do it. And the only way to hold that off is to say, well, look, he's cooperating, he's giving us information. But when we stop, then there's going to be consequences. We're really, we're, we're trying to be like, reality-based about this thing. We've always given you what we thought was actually going to happen in the real world. And it's the same thing from Vermont. You know, if we had had more information in Vermont, Vermont would have been a whole lot more quiet and cooperative. As it is, they've been really cooperative, right? They haven't filed any charges, but... You know, how long can we hold off on them without another piece of information? So, you know, you're, you're a reasonable person. Don't you think it, leave somebody else for an example, like this, this type of case, someone who's not cooperating and not talking with law enforcement, don't you think that if, if this would have been viral across the United States, every place you've ever been, don't you think that, I mean, if, if you hadn't been talking to us, we don't have any other choice but to try to do it on our own and use all the information that we've put together about you and your whereabouts and put it out to those communities for help. And we haven't done that because you've been talking with us. I mean, even, even the stuff we've done, I mean, we got to do, I think, a, a pretty good job, even on the search warrants. There were statements in the press that were looking for evidence of other crimes. And, you know, no one stood in front of a camera and did that. I mean, the cameras, you know, may have shown up, but no one said a word. You know, and we hope to still move forward on this. I mean, you only be so discreet about doing something on like a street that's <laughs> six houses long. Well, especially if you block it off. Yeah, I mean, but well, <laughs> well, we were trying to prevent people who we didn't want there to, you know, to getting into that, but you can't. Stop I'm them. just saying. Yeah, you got to go by your playbook, but I refuse to accept that there weren't ways you couldn't have been more discreet or more you know that's just my impression I have nothing to go on other than what I see and my gut feeling on stuff at this point because I feel like I get the trickle down bullshit from all parties involved right. so you know that may or may not be the case but that's just where I feel like I'm at right now right we can't change your feeling but we can I mean we've always come into this room trying to give you the straight scoop um, and we've tried to deal with you that way because we know that you're a smart guy and you know how the world works. And, and what I'm sensing, what you're telling me now, is, is you're trying to you know, look at us as if we've been you know, manipulating no. you somehow. No, I don't think anyone in this room has been manipulating. That's not my concern right now. My concern, you know, you're asking for more information. You talked about it going viral. If I give you, if, if I give you any more information, and it somehow gets out, and it gets in the paper again, you know, one more snippet of information could push the whole thing over the edge, you know, and then for, for, for the time being, as many times as it's been in the paper and there's still all this speculation, it hasn't really taken off. And why do you think that is? Well, I know it's because you haven't been giving official statements that you could, which I do appreciate that aspect of it. What I'm saying is, until I know what's going to happen with certain current issues, my big concern is that um, another rumor gets out. It doesn't have to come from you. Just another rumor from somebody. I don't know. And then, you know, I'm, not, I'm no longer in touch with all the different... I, I don't even know what's being said um, in the media or what has been said about the stories. I see little snippets here and there. But... Um, that's my concern, is that, you know, it, 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 something, it, if something else were to get out, and it, especially in a different area or something, 
then uh, you know, and, and and now there's the whole Nia Bay aspect of it now too. You know, it's like my kids live in Nia Bay now, and the gossip is the is the town pastime. So that's my concern right now. Is it doesn't even have to be. I feel like at the, at this point, it wouldn't even have to be something that was confirmed. It could just be a rumor. And well, you're not going to get rumors coming out of this, and you haven't so far. The stuff that's come out is when there's been when the people outside of this room feel like that you're not being forthcoming. Right. And, I know. And we can we can be advocates for how we want to pursue this case, but we need we need something. To, we need material. We need currency. We need something to advocate with, and that's what kind of uh, not kind of that's exactly what we've told you for the last six months or more. Yeah, I understand that. So, what about um, I mean, just the idea of and I'm just thinking you know, along the lines of what you know, tell the model just to stand down, even just a clue that doesn't give up anything from your perspective but at least gives everybody something to work with behind the scenes, nothing that we, you know, have to kind of go and publicize to the world, but a clue about, you know, one of the past murders that it's really not going to reveal anything. So you're not playing any cards, but at least where then going back to these guys' bosses and to Vermont and saying, look, you've given us a clue in exchange for this sort of discretion for everybody to kind of stand down, so to speak. Well, first of all, I don't know. You already have. Sure. You already have a lot of clues that I don't know about. Mm -hmm. You know, you have you have that computer. So you wouldn't be giving anything away. I'm just I'm just saying you have. I think you have a lot of background on me at this point. Sure, I'm sure that that I don't even remember at this point. So the bosses above us, though, don't know what's on that computer. Jeff and I know what's on that computer. So if, let's just use Frank's example for a second. So if you were to give us a clue, they don't know. Our, our bosses don't know what I'm being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> our bosses don't know what is on that computer. So they're not going to know. So they're not going to know if we already knew that or not. Vermont doesn't know either. They haven't seen the evidence. So you could be giving us nothing, but at least it's something we report to them. Yeah, he exactly. reported that he committed a murder in X day. Okay, no big deal. It's not going to give us anything after, you know, given the timeline that you set forward 14 years, but at least it's some sort of sign of progress. We can go back and say, no, 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 he's actually give us a clue and uh, things are moving forward, and they can sort of feel good about themselves what? and not doing. What, when you when you say clue, are you talking about giving you names? No. Or no. Not just a name, but give us a name. Or or state or something. State yeah. and it's high friend. Hey, you already know some of the states. Sure, sure. But give us something that we doesn't matter. Progress from where we were months ago. That's what we're looking for. I mean, sorry. Frank hadn't talked about this clue idea, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's something that we don't. Obviously, you can tell us something we already you know, have discussed in here. That's not a problem because everybody knows what's been discussed in here. But you know, let's assume it's something from your perspective. You're not giving us anything because you think, hey, we already have it. It's a clue, and it's just something that gives us credibility that we can report, even though you know, maybe this is just a fiction give us our, uh, you know, New York, New Jersey, all right, well, you know, New Jersey, or, you know, uh, something, something other, other thing that we can kind of report back that, you know, allows us a little bit of credibility with the people that we have to do with. Yeah. Something. Did you find any knives in New York or in the boat? Folding knives, about six inch long. I don't know. I think there might have been in the boat. I mean, I you told I us there was, you thought there was knives in the boat, right? I think there was a knife There's in the boat. There's two knives that were not in Kimberly's house, and I don't rem I don't know where they were. I thought they were in that bucket. I thought that they were, there may have, I may have left one in New York. Or there, I thought there might have been one in the boat. Just 
nice that I had from a long time ago. But I haven't seen him in any of the pictures, so I don't think that's Ted or Anne. I can find out about that. I don't I think there was a knife on the table. I don't remember. I don't remember a knife being in the bucket though. In the photos. The knife. Well, there was a folding knife. Why was that knife? Well, it's a folding knife, so I don't know. You took it apart, you might. Would there be blood on the knife? There, well, there might not on it, but maybe inside. It's in the joint control It's the kind that has the, the, the handles are actually bolted or screwed to it or something. It's not a solid piece, nothing you can disassemble it in some matter. Yeah, it's like riveted. Is the, would the blood be from the long time or just the knife? No, the blood's not for a long time ago, but I haven't, I haven't carried it for a while, so I couldn't remember where it, where I left it. Any other places where it might be? No, I don't. Well, it was in the boat, it was a long time, it was a long time ago. Well, 2005. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I, they're, they're both times that I got away. And the boat's been associated with the Washington murder? Yeah. On those lines, I'm waiting for Ted to respond. Because the guy that was getting met with one more time to look here, he's mm -hmm. wanting to get the boat search. From Ted. Um, on those lines. Um, we talked to um, someone out at the lab when we were talking about, you know, when the time comes when um, you decide that you want to give additional information so that we're prepared on what we need to do to be able to respond quickly. We asked about, you know, what are the chances of if there is someone that is, um, somebody that, if, there, if there's a body at the bottom of the lake, what are the chances of that body still being intact? seven years later or that kind of thing. What are we going to be looking for and what do we need to have in place in order to be able to find, find that? And one of the things that they said, um, which might be of interest to you, is depending on how how the body was put down there, um, it's potential, it's possible that the body is actually very intact. If the body was um, just tied to something and dropped to the bottom of the lake, there's definitely still going to be long bones and that kind of stuff. You won't have finger bones in that. There'll be you know, femurs and long bones and that kind of thing. If the body was contained in something, um, even a, a bag of some sort, um, it's very possible that the body could still be intact, um, depending on the depth of the lake. Um, all of that determines the kind of equipment that we would need in order, you know, in order to locate, um, locate the body. Um, and so, obviously not asking for details about where and who and all that kind of stuff, but in terms of uh, the Washington bodies, were they contained in something or were they just tied to the milk jokes? I mean, is it something where we, we might possibly actually still get it intact? No. No. Okay. And that's helpful for them to know because that, that's a whole different type of search that it would have to be then a different type of equipment. Let me just try to call. Let me step out and try to call. Yep. This is not answering the question. And do you, I guess, because I'm kind of getting a different vibe now, I want, do you still envision in the future us working together to the point where we, we can get this information? Yeah, I don't see how we're going to get anything else done. I just, uh, I mean, you're waiting for, you know, whatever you're waiting for to find out. But yeah, I have, I have concerns with current issues, but, you know, I, I, I can definitely foresee down the road there's going to be a lot more 
that can be resolved. Can, uh, and that's good. I might think about it in a different manner. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, but that's good information because we'll be able to pass that on. If yeah. you're still open and you're still. No, I haven't. My uh, outlook on this, as far as the ultimate end, end result, hasn't really changed. It's just it has more to do with timelines, expectations. I guess. But and you know, and we're the balancing game we're, that we're talking about you know, is we're just trying to keep everybody happy the best we can till we get to that point and those are the those are the that's kind of a difficult balancing act for us right and it sounds like you're holding on to some of this stuff to trade in for something you might need later true well yeah because i don't have much else to, but I mean, that's the thing is you know this whole clue idea you know might give us a little short-term solution to kind of keep this thing moving the way we want it to move um, and maybe even gets you something in the short term. You know, if you're thinking about, like, I don't know, you know, you come, you give a clue, and, uh, you know, you want lunch or something like that. I mean, that's something that can be worked out. Ooh, you need a candy bar. I know. That's what I think, you know, I don't know if he feels guilty about it. But if you had a cigar, you'd probably, just you'd probably pass out if you had a cigar <laughs> right now. I put mean, the, the notion... <laughs> The notion of this whole idea is, you know, hey, you, you, you come over, we keep things going, you know, at least on a, on, a, on a smaller scale. You're not giving up anything in terms of trading value, but you're giving us credibility with other people we have to deal with. You're not giving us any useful information, really, other than, all right, well, we got, you know, a night in Washington. Uh, it's not like we're going to solve the clue game on that, like, you know, Professor Plum in the library and that kind of thing. But it, it gives us a little bit of you know stuff to go back with people and buy time and buy right. what we need to buy. And you know, in the short term, you know, if you have short term needs that you think, oh, you know, it might be fun to have sushi. That's something that you know, can be arranged. We're not talking about you know, huge clues here. What did you guys find in the boat? Was there anything left? I thought we went over yeah. 10 um, there, there I saw was, the list. There was no knife. Oh, you mean in terms of the lab? Yeah. The, um, it has not, uh, everything has not gone to, uh, finished up at DNA yet. Um, so it's possible that there were still, uh, there were some, some areas that did test positive for blood, just when they do like the first, they call the presumptive test, when the people that were searching it. So those things went into the lab, and some of those things were like the screws for pulling the carpeting in. That kind of thing. Those have not come back yet from DNA. Um, the little, uh, there were some little fragments that they thought might have been bone fragment, um, was not bone. Did not test positive for bone. That one's come back. Yeah. They didn't, we, didn't, we didn't ask what it was, but it wasn't bone. Um, there's some hair that um, is not yours. But the way they figure out hair. I was I was mostly curious if they found any blood. Yeah, there was. I wasn't sure how long because it's been sitting there in the rain for so long. I was curious if there was. I mean, I know there was, mm -hmm. was when I parked it. Yeah, there was. I don't. We haven't heard anything back about it, and, and then they they need something to care of it. Right. So there's no night. No night. There was no night for the boat. It may have been. Uh, I don't know what happened to that night. It was a Tonto, cold steel Tonto. How big? Like was it just? It had a. It was a four, four and a half inch folding blade. Okay. And I think I bought it at Walmart. For Do you remember what color? It looks very similar to the one that I had on me when I was arrested. Just a different blade style. Same for company and everything. I think that. So if I'm correct about that, that was the murder weapon for one of the Washington murders. Well, it wasn't involved. It was involved. Yeah. I think we talked about before when we were asking about federal jurisdiction about guns. Yeah. 
for the for any for either of those that you shot. We'll get the whole story eventually. Mm -hmm. okay, we're just going to get parts so that we can move. Uh, no, the only person I ever shot was uh, Bill Curry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is trying to. One of the Washington things that was uh, uh, it's just no, it wasn't. It wasn't. Somebody in the head. So. Did, that, did you mean to kill him or they died? Is there a struggle when you get them and they died, or what did you mean to kill them? Really? No, I wasn't trying to kill him, I was just taking uh, out of action. I think we read that in one of the letters with the, the male, the male female couple. Yeah, I sort of, you know, Rich mentioned that they gave you all that stuff. <laughs> but I should have asked them to give me a copy so I know which ones you have. We could go over that together and we could fill in the blank. At some point in time. Well, we know. In I Washington. didn't realize they were allowed to take stuff out of my shoulder. Why wasn't it? That was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know. Yeah, that there was a couple in Washington State, and you now we know a couple. We read that in the you know. For Are those the same couple from the, that you took to the boat and dumped in the lake? can't find this knife.
Could be on a different Washington cache. No. A couple of husband and wife, you know. I'm not going to talk about that. So. What about other cash? Is there another cash? Well, the other caches aren't related to any, I mean, that, that one in New York is the only one directly related to any of the murderers part of my The gun is some of the gun in their staff. Well, that would give us something to go on if there was a cache that they could go and retrieve. Yeah. So. I think that would keep the FBI busy. busy. Yeah. It all still belongs to me. Have you have a candy bar? bar. <laughs> if you thought, if you thought <laughs> one that you wanted to give up, that maybe we might be able to work something out with the, our video. Oh yeah, that's uh, a good idea. Well, that's another issue. Is there the others? I I can't find just with satellite maps. So we have to a general area. Yeah. Well, if you gave them a general area, they could probably get some. We, we, have, we just have to have enough information to get a hold of you know mm -hmm. the, the tech person that, that covers that area. Right. So again, you know, get cash. It's not related to anything. You're really not giving up any of your cards to trade with. Well, that's the issue. They're all related to stuff. They're just, yeah. I just have to have to think about it. Well, you yeah. want to try and remember what's in. Yeah. Yeah. What? It's sort of interesting for you too. You'll get to see what's in there, and you'll get to see him again. Yeah, and then it's like one know. of those oh shit moments. <laughs> <laughs> you dig it up, and I see what's in there. Israel, there's been too many oh shit. <laughs> yeah, well, I've had enough. I've had my share for the year. <laughs> well, you know, that, 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 this is just the way. Well, yeah. why don't you? Why don't you? If, if you were able to do that, and that's going to buy us, and give everybody something to do, and people like to have something to do, if they can uh, be digging up a cash. And then you'll get to see how the video works and you'll get to see what's in there. How long does a body last in a freshwater lake? I mean, because there's no critters that eat. It depends how deep. It depends how right? deep. I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. It depends how deep the temperature of the water. And if the body's contained in something. And it's, it's not critters, it can be like bacteria yeah. and organisms. They were talking about. So if the water is below, say, 45 degrees all the time. I would think that would be good. And I think you said they up to 80 feet at one point in time. No, there's one that's a lot deeper than that. Like 200 feet. So we should like get a submarine for yeah. deeper. <laughs> deeper than 200 feet. You guys know about Lake Crescent in Washington? Mm -hmm. How deep is it? I think that lake is five to 700 feet deep. They've really? never been to the bottom of it. There's people who have gone off that lake, and they still haven't gone. Their cars are in the that the lake? That's one of the lakes. So this is really deep. So this thing is never going to be able to recover. Well, it's over 200 feet. feet. And I so don't 500 feet. That's, that's the, the lake. deepest part. But oh. I'm saying I don't know how deep it was. I know the general area. I had a fish finder, but it didn't register how deep it was. I just it was know like it was over. I had it down at 100 feet. Oh, is that your fish finder goes to 100? I think I don't remember. I just know if you've been to the lake, you would see what I'm talking about. It, it you know, drops down like a V. So, but you didn't go to the 500 foot place as far as no. I wasn't. I was in a. I was near the edge, but. You know, 30 feet out from the bank on that lake, it goes, it drops down to 50, 60 feet already. And I was, so anyway. So. They, the lab was talking about a case recently, actually, where they recovered a car that had been 
submerged in water. I don't know how deep it was even in, but it was it was a relatively cold lake. And because it had been submerged in, and water still got in, but critters and other things weren't able to get in the car. And that was in the 40s, in the 1940s, and part of the body was still intact because the, the person was protected by the car. So it, it, there's a lot of factors that go into it. But there will definitely, um, even if there wasn't skin or things like that, long bones will be, can be recovered. It is because of the small bones. Yeah, I know. Nobody. But if there's other, if there's other specifics in terms of things that you know of depths and temperatures and that kind of stuff, you can certainly make some phone calls and find out what. Well, that I figured you would have guessed that way. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty obvious. But um, that was, I, I was, I, I always have been curious as to what. I would think as deep as that lake is, it would probably sit in there just exactly as it was when it first touched down. I don't know most freshwater lakes that deep, there aren't even that many fish that go down that deep. But that was not in anything, it's just ropes or something holding it. Is that the milk jug that you said? Well, that's what the weights were. Milk jugs, how many milk jugs? Is it going to move around? Uh, no. How many milk jugs? No. Uh, at least four or five. I think. Just for one body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, what about a cash that didn't work on for next week? Do you want them to line? Do you want them to line it up? That's the thing. It can't be. You can't make a decision that day because they won't have time to. Yeah, they won't have time to line it up. You think I'm going to the like the yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But if you think about it over the weekend or something. Yeah. Um, and if there's anything you want, like you know, can you give me like an hour on the internet, maybe? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before, before we do this. <laughs> you want an hour of me? You can do a little research. I've been an info blackout for too long. I think it's, you know, you can think about that and if there's anything you want short term in terms of... I was joking, I wouldn't do that anyway. No, I'm not talking about the internet. I'm talking about, like, yeah, if you want some sort of, alright, I'm going to do this, but... You wouldn't do that on the internet if we set a computer down here? No, because I know you're just going to go right to see everywhere I went. You <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't do that to you. No. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no anything, you know, to kind of satisfy any short-term goals you have, even if it's just food or coffee or, you know, whatever. Obviously, it's coffee anywhere. But, you know, again, it's sort of a situation where I think you're not giving up anything, just giving us help with it. Where we need to persuade, right? I think it, you know. No, I, I can see your, I, I see your point of view. I do on this, but at the same time, I have my own frustrations right now as well. So, mm -hmm. but, but even like this is productive. This would be viewed as productive. You know, I mean, you, you said you, you came over, we you got stuff, and so it's only like, productive from a non-prosecuting attorney's point. Of view. <laughs> <laughs> it's productive for us. <laughs> Well, this already got me on enough stuff. It's okay. It's okay. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not getting out on bail anytime soon. You keep thinking that I'm not working, <laughs> trying to work with you. I am. But from my perspective, you know, Israel said he's going to do a lot of things on a short time frame, and we've been sitting here yeah, well, looking the months away. And believe me, I'm aware of the months. <laughs> I'm just going uh, to. Yeah, it's been a long I have a new appreciation for things being done at a different speed, that's all. So let me just make sure I'm clear on the cash. Um, 
Do you have a general area now that you can give us, or do you want to think about it? Washington, right? But I mean, even oh, though there's the two the districts. state, and we have we have offices in a bunch of places, so we have to figure out which office we're working with. Within 50 or 100 miles of. Mm -hmm. Is there anything close to Nia Bay or? Well, yeah. Area? yeah, not near Nia Bay, but in that area. That area? Okay. Outside of Seattle, between Seattle and Seattle. Right. You already met those agents already, so that's not what you're bringing in. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
moving and then we can touch base with you at the beginning of next week and uh, have a better idea of, of what your schedule is going to be like and figure out what everything And I'll know at that point what their schedule is going to be and we can maybe figure out some time that will work. Yeah, we might be. We might be able to have another meeting next week. Anyway. Might have All right, what we may do then, Jeff, is I, Jeff and I may come by the jail and just figure out that piece that we were just talking about, uh, about the timing, and then we can, can go from there. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, I'm supposed to talk to the mom tomorrow, and I'll just tell them that you know, she's moving on. You know, we've got the clues, and use that to our advantage. I don't really understand the role or not. Well, it's frustrating uh, from our perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, hypothetically, if they charge me federally, would you indict, would they indict me up here? Would they, I just don't understand, considering everything else that's going on, why they would charge me here. I just don't understand how it would work. I don't understand how it would work. They would or how, I guess not why, but how it would work. I don't know, like the logistics of it. Well, they, you know, like I said, they want, they want to be able to have solved that, that crime solved. Right, they want, to, they want to put my name on it. That's I understand right. that. Yeah, it's not right. going to be officially solved till. Exactly. I know, but, you know, they want to be able right. to put your name to it. Right, and, and I understand you know, that. That's, and then the question is, how is that you know, going to work? Do they want to file the charges there? And you know, that's what we're getting. Yeah. And it's a lot easier for them just to stomach it if they, you know, their forbearance is giving rise to clues to other murders, you know, whatever those clues might be. I think yeah. that, that is able to accomplish our goal. I understand their perspective. Right? Yes, but I am. Um, from, from my perspective, though, even if they were to officially charge me at this point, it's not. Uh, not like it would be real breaking news anyway. Yeah. I mean, you know, in some ways it would be because no law enforcement person has ever confirmed that you're right. Yeah. So it would just be confirmation of everyone's current speculation. Exactly. So I, I, I don't, I'm not interested in it from that point. I was just interested in it from a logistics point. I mean, where do they have to fly me to Vermont? Charging or well, yeah, some of the questions. I'm hoping not to get there. Is it warmer in Vermont? A little warm. We talked to them Monday and it just snowed and they told us. They got more snow than us then. Yeah. yeah. Got a quota for last year. Yeah. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to turn the busy up and. You've got to take a week or anything for me. Take yeah. a minute. Right. You're not going to eat this? No, I'm good. Thank you. You're sure? Yeah, I'm sure. <clears throat> Thank you.